Welcome to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. In this episode, Shabir Akil Danish, CFO of Exist, rejoins me to talk about how customization on a mass scale drives success. It's not as daunting as it sounds. Listen in as Shabir shares the value of mass customization and transformation leadership. Welcome back, Shabir. Thank you. It's nice to be back. All right, man. So, uh, you know, we. We'd like to continue the conversation with Shabir Danish of Exist. Uh, in our previous episode, we dived into transformational leadership and how that really helps companies succeed. So what I would like to do in this episode, I would want to build on that and talk about how customization on a mass scale drives success. How does that sound to you, Shabir? Yeah, sounds great. Let's do it. This whole concept sounds a bit daunting, right? I mean, can you share some uh, thoughts on how companies can do customization on a mass scale? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, uh, it, it tailors off of some of the conversation that we had when you and I talked in the first episode, uh, which was this transition that companies, large or small, are making from what was always the industrial era, this mass production era, uh, to mass customization, right? And this idea that I want to be able to customize my product or service, whatever that is, to um, my audience segment or my customer segment in as specific way a possible, right? And that's what the digital era is about. And so um, it does sound daunting, but it, it comes back to one key principle, which is always true for any business, any time, any era, which is know your customer. That's all mass customization is really about. It's about knowing your customer. And what we're able to do now with the technologies we have at our disposal is to know our customer on a massive global scale, right? With artificial intelligence, machine learning, the internet even, um, digitization, even Excel spreadsheets for that matter, or CMS tools or, or Salesforce. All of these things are about helping us. So, Yes, it does sound daunting, but there are there's plenty of help around once we have focus and vision on what it is we're looking to accomplish. And in this case, it's about how can I leverage those tools and resources to my advantage? How can I leverage those tools and resources to focus on getting to know my customer and their user stories in as detailed a way possible so then I can go and figure out, remember that we talked about this, we talked about empathy and spending 80% of your time empathizing. So how can I use this data to understand the life of my customers so then I can go back and develop my set of products and services uh, to be able to solve their specific problems. That, that's all this is about. It's, it's really just uh, the digital era's version of know your customer. I like the way you put it. I mean, I think it definitely kind of really clarifies that whole concept. Well, the you know the the misconcept uh, about this idea of mass customization it seems like a, a very big deal, right? Uh, so kind of that kind of leads me into my next question. Uh, especially, you know, like I said, for many it is odd that mass customization can drive efficiency in this digital times that we're living in. How does it really work? You know, from your perspective, what have you seen? Like what? How can you drive efficiency? It's, it's always about making things better, faster, in a, in a in an easier way to serve your customers. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, so it's, it's a really good question, right? Because we always think about, you know, digital and is it gonna does it cost my business more and it's more of an investment? The reality is, when done right, uh, mass customization as a concept not only saves you time and money and resources as a company, but you're able to pass those savings along to your end consumer. I'll give you a very simple, low-tech example. Um, tailoring clothes. Now, in the mass production era, uh, we loved one size fits all. That was the best way to produce things. I didn't have to worry about it. Elastic was our friend, right? Yeah. Um, and that was, that was how business was done, is find ways to produce things on a massive scale. Now, when I bought that, um, that product was either too tight, too loose, too long, too short. And what would the customer do? You and I, you know, we grew up in the 80s. What do we do with our jeans? We'd, we'd roll them up, right? Remember this? You roll up your Absolutely. jeans, Absolutely. right? Because they, I was too short or I was too tall, whatever it was. 
the idea of mass customization, you know, the, the idea of drawing efficiency using mass customization is to think of a tailor who knows your body type and knows your body size and can do this on a mass scale. Guess what? I'm saving co- money and cost on fabric and time and energy on fabric, you know, fabric and supplies and building that that product, those that the pair of jeans we just talked about. Um, and that's that's money saved on my side as a producer of that product. And you as a consumer are saving time and energy because now you don't have to go to that tailor to get your clothes retailored or you're not having to fold it up or do something else or have mom kind of cut the bottoms of the jeans and try to hem it. And then it's still, you know, so that's a great example, I think, an analogy. Now, we take that concept and now let's talk about now that we kind of understand how that works at a, at a simple or a low tech level. We apply those same principles at a high tech level. Uh, take something like uh, Netflix. Now, when I log on to Netflix and you log on to Netflix, we both see different things because Netflix uses its algorithms to understand um, our viewing preferences in a way that benefits us. So the benefit to me is I don't have to go searching through thousands of titles. Netflix say, hey, have you thought about this title? Have you thought about this? Based on what you watched previously, you're, you know, we think you'd like this. That's the savings to me as an end consumer. It saves me time and could save me money, right? Because maybe I don't need to subscribe to something else because I get everything I want, you know, from that one service. Um, It's the same way uh, for Netflix itself, because the more they know their consumers, the less likelihood is that they're going to buy content on their, on their, on their uh, service that doesn't help uh, or is not watched by their audiences. And that's money saved. So that's a great example of mass customization at work uh, at a place like Netflix, you know, and there's a thousand other examples right behind it. I like it. I like it because, you know, from, from the, the angle that you, you came about on, it's not only just helping organizations, you know, companies producing things or, or creating content, et cetera, it's about the end customer and what benefits they're getting, right? And I like the way you came about on how a customer's behavior drives the efficiency on the producer side. So it's kind of a, 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 a little give and take on both sides and everybody's benefiting from this uh, a new way of doing business where mm-hmm. I want certain things in a certain way and you are able to produce or, or cater to my needs. And in the process, the efficiency is just not, it's a natural byproduct, seems like, right? That's right. And so that's a key difference when we think about the business value. Sometimes we call it shareholder value or productivity value in the in a digital era where we're focused on mass customization versus a industrial era. And what happened in the industrial era is the amount of scale and synergy you get from going from a zero to a thousand uh, diminishes over time as you go from a thousand to 10,000, say, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, because that's just how uh, the, the large manufacturing works is once you've gained that scale and that efficiency and you bring waste out, um, there's not a lot more you can incrementally do. And uh, there's actually science behind not spending you know, equal amounts of money to solve the last 10%. You know, they might even yeah. say it's okay to have that level of inefficiency because you're going to end up chasing your tail trying to solve and be 100%. Whereas in a Absolutely. digital era, in a mass customization era, the more you can customize and the more you understand about your audience segment, that's a gift that just keeps on giving. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Totally get it. Yeah, totally get it. I mean, just, you know, it kind of really... It helps from a customer perspective. You know, I'm always talk talk about the business side, right? And and especially uh, who is the receiver, right? And from a receiver's perspective, it's all about buying something or getting something that is tailored to them, right? That's what I want. And that's what I can get from my request to my, uh, either it's my uh, uh, software provider or or it's my, you know, the products I'm buying from, a grocery store or any any of those uh, interactions that you have with as a consumer, right? And then all of a sudden you see this piece of the puzzle, which always being a, a, a challenge for, for, for companies for a long time where you're producing things, uh, 
of course, you are targeting a certain segment and all that, but at the, at the same time, you're struggling to to get your product out to the masses in a way that is adaptable to what their needs are, right? And I think with this process, like you said, it is creating that, you know, it's taking out that extra noise from the system and then making it very easy for both sides to collaborate in a way that helps efficiency at the same time, making sure that the consumer is happy with what they're getting. So I think I, I like it. I like the way that you you kind of connected the dots on that. But so let me let me take a little different angle at this, right? On a personal note, um, with all the projects you're juggling, how do you stay on top of latest things happening in the industry? What is what is the secret sauce? It's a it's a good question. And look, I, I'm going to say mass customization again to the rescue, right? So you know when we think about our news sources and our information sources, you know I, I'll I'll stay up to date with just. I, I allot a certain amount of my time to just understand in general what's happening. Um, but in this instance, Google is my friend. Google, uh, a lot of times I look at news feeds that way and I customize the news feeds I get to the topics I care about. You know, for me personally, right now, I care about media and entertainment. I care about technology. Um, and I care about the impacts and the disruptions that are happening in each of those sectors. And so 80% of what I read and what I choose to read is about those topics, right? And the other 20% is, right, because uh, at the same time, we can, as consumers of information, and, and, and this might be a topic of a whole other podcast, uh, we can almost surround ourselves with things that we, um, that we care about. And so then we don't know what we don't know. So Absolutely. I try not to make that 100% of what I focus on. I, I would say about 70, 80% of what I focus on are those topics and the things I care about. And then the other 20 to 30%, I, I try to leave open to you know, just, just anything, anything I'm, I'm curious about. Um, and I, I dedicate in a lot, sir, uh, a certain amount of time in my mornings. Um, I try not to do meetings, for example, before 10 a.m. because I'll spend... 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. every morning, getting organized, getting focused, and understanding what else is out there and what's happening and how that might impact uh, what I will focus on, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, that's, that's a great suggestion. I mean, I think, uh, and once you have that in place, it just allows you to be more productive, like you said. At the end of the day, what is your productivity level determines by, you know, all the things that you have put in place, you know, uh, especially when you talk about staying on top of things and it's not easy in this day and age where you have things coming from all sides, your, your morning starts with all these emails yeah. coming from all over the place and all these other distractions that you have. And I mean, it's just part of our lives, right? Uh, in today's world. So, and I, I think, I, I think, well, what I was going to say is that I think that uh, the distractions, that's the key word, yeah. right? And I think, I, I, I think it was Gandhi who said actually that speed is there something, uh, not a direct quote, but he said something to the extent of speed is irrelevant without direction. Yeah, makes sense. It, was, it always stuck with me. It's such a powerful statement, right? Um, and the idea there is spend time understanding what direction you are going in. Where are you headed? Um, what do you want to accomplish? A lot of times it's what you said. We wake up in the morning. We first thing we do is look at our phone and we start answering emails. And before you know it, it's noon. And it's like, oh my gosh, where did the day just go? Yeah. Um, and sometimes that's great. You've enabled other people to get things done that they need to get done. But what about the things you need to get done? And are you focused on the things that you need to accomplish? And that's why it sounds almost, wow, he spends two hours a day kind of reading and focusing. And it's like, yeah, because that's the time I need. And I've determined I need to ensure that I am 100% focused um, on the things that matter to me. Got it. Got it. So let me ask you this. Now, what have you seen in terms of the value created for a company uh, when it comes to adopting transformational leadership and mass customization? What are your thoughts on that? From yeah, a value look, think, creation? Absolutely. Look, I mean, uh, in my experience, you know, I've been, I've been working on this for over 20 years um, and uh, looking at this at both large corporations, at small businesses um, and everything in between. Uh, I think transformational leadership and the concept of mass customization go hand in hand. Uh, it is the chicken and the egg. Uh, one does not come without the other. 
um, because how we approach our customers and how we approach our business and our products and our services, it has to change, right? And so knowing how to drive that change in a way that is effective. How many times have we been in a situation where, quite frankly, we're, we're trying to drive too much change too fast and as we spin and spin and spin, it kind of it cracks that foundation. And what I mean by that is you you frustrated not just your customers, you frustrated your employees, um, and, and people just quite frankly will abandon your vision. On the flip side of that, if we can learn to pace ourselves, and that's what transform transformational leadership teaches us to do, is to pace that change and that pace. What transformational leadership allows us to do is ensure that this movement towards mass customization is done in a responsible and repeatable way. Okay. And so I think that yeah. concept or those concepts and doing those hand in hand, I've seen it time and again where somebody is extremely good at mass customization, but not focused on change management and not focused on transformational leadership and bringing others along the journey with them, right? Because we know this, it's not, life isn't about that, that singular rock star. It's about, it's about teams. It's about building teams and, and motivating people in that direction. That's what leaders do. And on the flip side, I've seen people who are fantastic leaders, but they're not necessarily transformational leaders or they're not necessarily understanding, embracing this digital era that we all find ourselves in now. And so when combined together, it's, I don't think it's a, va it's a matter of one or the other drawing value. It's you need both of those concepts. I've seen large corporations and startups, when they embrace those concepts, their ability to unlock value, not just for themselves and their corporations, but for their customers and their audiences uh, is unmatched. Those are the companies that are gonna make it through the 21st century. And those are the companies that, that all of us should be looking at and looking for uh, and emulating as we, as we move forward here. Yeah, great, great example. Thank you for sharing that. I know we covered quite a bit today. So I would ask you this question. What is the one takeaway you would want to leave with us today? Simple, know your customer. Do everything in your power understand your customer, live, step in their shoes, walk in their shoes, um, talk to your customers, spend time with, do everything you can possibly do to know your customer. That's what this is about. Great advice. Thank you so much, Abir. It was great talking to you today. You got it. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. Shabir shared his valuable insights on how mass customization can drive business growth. His key takeaway, know your customer. Join us next time when we talk about how the data-driven economy results in innovation and disruption. We would love to hear from you. Continue the conversation by connecting with me on LinkedIn or Twitter learn more about Innovative Solution Partners and schedule a free consultation by visiting isolutionpartners.com. Never miss a podcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Information is in the show notes.